Hello, everybody. Welcome to Agile Compass Consulting. So today, we're going to be looking on how to create a dashboard in Azure DevOps. Let's say you're on your Teams board right here, and you want to go to dashboards. Okay, you hover around overview, or you just go ahead and click on overview, and you're going to see dashboards. So while you're, you're on your dashboards, you're going to see if you have a dashboard open or you have other dashboards, you're going to see it there. Let's just say we want to create a new dashboard, right? Um, we're going to click on the drop down here. And then we're going to click on new dashboard. You're going to add the name of your dashboard. Always remember to use the name of your team as the name of the dashboard. So you always remember. Let's just say our team's name is Zumba. We'll say Zumba dashboard. Okay. If you like to put a description, by all means, a description of your dashboard here. Um, you always click on automat automatically refresh the dashboard every five minutes. Why? Because we want to see real time data all the time. And then you want to select your dashboard type, either team dashboard or project dashboard. So of course, we want to track progress for all the stuff on our team's board. Now, if you are overseeing like your whole project, definitely you want to go with project dashboard. So here we're going to go with team dashboard. And then right here, you want to make sure you're tracking the right team, right? And the team that I want to track on this particular dashboard, even though I gave the name as Zumba dashboard, is the ADO tutorial team. That's the name of the team, okay? So, and this is because I already have a dashboard with that name. So I'm just doing this for practice. You're going to hit create. And now you have your dashboard. So now once you have your dashboard, you can see right here, it tells you this dashboard doesn't have any widgets just yet. Add one or more widgets to gain visibility into your team's progress. Right? So we're going to click on add a widget. Now there are so many different widgets on Azure DevOps that you want to be very clear on what you want to capture for your team. What report do you want to capture, right? What do your stakeholders want to see? Very important. So if you're a Scrum Master, your um, stakeholder or your manager wants to see maybe um, what your burn down chart looks like, or they want to see what your velocity looks like, or they want to see, okay, what is the team's second time, the lead time, or whatever data that they would like to see. They would like to see maybe the number of bugs that you guys currently have in the sprint or maybe in the whole backlog. Definitely you want to consider that, right? This is just to say there are so many things that you can track using the different widgets. So you need to know what is it that you want to track. If you look at your right-hand side where you see add widget, you'll see that you can scroll down and look for whatever it is that you want to track, right? But um, again, if you just want to select a, a specific few, you can type the names here and it's going to pull them up. So let's say we want to track and always look at our burn down chat. So you're going to click on burn down here and then you're going to click on add. So when you add that, see, you see already the data on your left hand side, right? And let's say we want to also track, I love to track uh, the cumulative flow diagram. It's very important. This will help you see the different states, right? Of the different work items on your board. So you show you, okay, these are the items that are in to do. These are the items that are in progress. And these are the items that are done for this particular period of time. So you want to also be able to look at data like that and see how you guys are progressing. So yeah. For your cumulative flow diagram, you click on that and then you click on add. Notice if you do not add it, you won't be able to see it. So you see, this is our um, cumulative flow diagram that we have on the left-hand side over here. Now, if you like second time, by all means, you can click on that. If you are also helping out with deployments, you want to add deployment statuses. So you're able to see, okay, these are the items coming up for deployment or these are the times coming up for deployment, right? There are a lot of other items that I love to track here. Let's, um, especially this query tab, because this query tab will help you 
to kind of like add uh, different queries that you want to, um, you know, create and show the reports to your managers. Let's just say like we're talking about the bugs, you'll be able to, you know, um, do a query that will track all the bugs on your teams, maybe sprint or your team's whole backlog and then be able to visualize all of those bugs in one place, right? And be able to track them and see how your team is resolving them. So you want to add that. Uh, let's say you want, even if you want to track like different features on your team's board, you can use query tab because you can pull those features on a, you know, query and then you use feature tab and you'll be able to see where to add filters. We're gonna see how you can add that in a bit, all right? Okay, there are other things. I love to see capacity. Yes, this is a big one. I love to see capacity as well because I want to see in one place, right? If I'm showing my team our dashboard, we want to see, okay, the number of days left in the sprint. We want to see the capacity. When we look at the capacity, you see how, you know, the capacity will show you the committed versus completed. So you'll be able to see that and see if you guys are over committing or under committing or if you're just okay. Um, you also want to see the spring go. Of course, we want to see the spring go uh, because when we're looking at all the data or the reports on one place, um, we don't want to go back and forth. Even though our spring go is showing on our board, it's important to have the spring go also showing on your dashboard. That will um, help everybody, you know, refresh or have that repetition so people can always remember to be focused on the goal. So I'm going to click on that spring go there and add the widget. Okay, and then let's say we want to look at the sprint overview as well, which is also important. We want to look at, okay, these are the items in progress. These are the um, number of days or whatever. You're going to click on that and we're going to add. Let's leave it at this for now. And of course, if you need more stuff like the velocity chart we're talking about, definitely you want to add that as well. All right, so let's look at, um, for example, our burn down chart first. So. Once you add all of these items that you want to track, the next thing you want to do is to configure them, right? Because if you do not configure them right, you will not have the right data. So you go over here to where you have configure on that particular widget and you click on that. Now you'll be able to see uh, a title here. This is a burn down. You can decide on the size of this burn down chart here by selecting whatever, um, you know, size that you would like, but I like for it to be big like this. So that is visually appealing to anyone that looks at it. And then for the teams, um, yeah, we, the, this is a project that we're actually, this team is actually on, which is an ADO tutoring and the team's name is ADO tutoring team. And then we want to track all the issues under this board. Of course, if you have uh, different things that you want to track, um, on this burn down, maybe you guys use different issue type names. You can definitely use that. We only have these options because this is just what I have on this board at this moment. Okay, and then you want to include all the box on the issues backlog, okay? Now, if you have specific criteria that you want to see for the burn down chat, even though you, are, um, you have all the issues here, if you want specific stuff as well, you can definitely click on add and then you select the field of what you want to add. Maybe you want to show effort or area path or just some iterations. You can definitely make your selections there. Now we do not want anything. So we're gonna close this for now. And then um, burn down on count of work items. Yes, we wanna see the count of work items. That's what we want to track on here. When it comes to the time period, we want to leave it um, because this is a sprint burn down. We want to leave it as uh, the start and end of the sprint. Now, if you want to select a specific date to track the items, you can go to uh, the date here and just select the dates of when you want to track this particular issues, right? So it all depends on you. You can do that um, or you can just select the sprint date. Um, it will automatically be selected once you're on the right um, board. Okay, so now we want to show the burn down. Yes, of course, we want to show the burn down. So that's why these two are always automatically checked out. So if you want to check it, you will not be able to see it clearly. Um, and then you see show total scope. You want to show the total scope. 
I also love to see the completed work. So I'm going to check this. So you see that um, this green is added here because those are the items that have been completed. So you want to visualize everything on that board. Uh, plot remaining work using work item type color. So yeah, I want to see the remaining work in different colors and shades um, based on what is already, um, the colors are already added to it in a way, right? Like it's kind of automatic there. All right. And then let's just say we want to, <clears throat> we want to consider show resolved work as completed because some teams, the way Azure DevOps is set up, um, you might have a done colon, but you, you still have a resolved colon, which could mean different things for different teams. So if your resolved colon include items or means that those items have been completed based on what your definition is, your definition of done is you can check this one, but if not, you can leave it blank. All right, so once we feel like we've added everything that we, is required, we'll go ahead and click save. Let's just keep the, the same color as blue. All right, so we're gonna keep this color as blue uh, so that we can visualize the green here for completed items. So you see that all the other items uh, that have not been completed are in blue color, and then the completed items are green, okay? So you see that we've actually created our burn down chart here, and you see the results of what we have. So this is a new sprint I just created today. So that's why you're seeing the data is crazy, but at least I just wanted to show you guys how that would look like rather than just showing a blank page, right? All right, let, let's look at uh, this one right here. All right, so we wanna leave that as this tutorial team. So, so it's telling us that the number of issues we have is two, two not started and one in progress. So if you have a large team, it will tell you how many tickets that you guys have on that particular sprint and how many are in progress. Now it's also gonna show you the number of hours. So you see 70 of 120, which means that um, the total number of hours that you have available is 120 and the hours that you've used so far is 70 which tells us that we are on track, right? So if you see that this starts to go all the way to the right, as it's going all the way to the right, you even start to turn yellow and red so that you know that, you know, there's issues with your capacity um, for your team and you can call out and try to address what the problem is. Okay, for the sprint goal, yes, you can definitely set your sprint goal up. Um, so just adding the widgets there, if you want to change the background, that's totally up to you, what you want to see. Um, but those are standard colors, I'll leave it like that. If we had a spring goal for this particular sprint, um, once we add that widget, it was going to show us the spring goal right here. But I didn't set that up, so that's why we're seeing a blank there. Let's look at the velocity chart here. For velocity chart, I know it looks so crazy. Um, you can go ahead and title it how you would like to title it. Um, uh, the size is okay for me, but if you want to reduce the size, you can definitely do that. You make it smaller or bigger, whatever. And then the team's name, making sure you're tracking the right team. And then we're tracking the um, issue types here. And then count of work items, the number of iterations is six. I think that's the maximum you can track. Um, even on JRA, it's the same thing. You can only track a maximum of six sprints, um, you know, behind the display worked items for iterations days past start date so i don't want to add no days or there because uh, you don't want to add days <laughs> to the iteration where the sprint has already started we want to be accurate with our data right so we're going to keep it at zero uh highlight work completed late days past end date of iteration after which work is late so yeah I sometimes like to track this one, uh, show resolved work as completed. Yes, like we mentioned in the other widget, uh, some teams have resolved work as completed, as completed state. So I will check that if your team has that. All right, and then we're gonna hit save. And that is our velocity chart there, okay? Now, if you want to move any of this to the top or to the bottom, you can just drag it. 
So you click on it, you hold down the left uh, button and you drag it and put it where you want to see it, right? So we want this to be at the top. We want to have our capacity right at the top. And then our burn down looks good. Our velocity chart, it's okay if we leave our velocity chart here. And then also we had the query tile. Yeah, the query tile, let's look at the query tile. So yeah, the query tile, you just write the name of the query. This is where you're gonna go to the queries that you've created and saved under your shared queries. You go on there, you click on it. I don't have any queries there, so that's why you don't see any options down here to select. But when if you had those queries created, you go there and click on that and it's gonna give you. And then you can decide what background color you want. Yeah, I don't have no queries here, so. I'll just uncheck that. So yeah, you select what color you like and then and then you hit save, okay? This is it for creating a dashboard in Azure DevOps. And once we're done with all of this, we just hit done editing. So you're done editing and this is what you get, right? For your dashboard. And if you want to make any changes to this dashboard, all you need to do is go to edit button on your right right here and you click on edit and you can make edit on anything that you want to make, add or take out on this board. And when you're done, you click done editing. So that's how you create it. And um, another tip is just go ahead. If this is a, a dashboard that you're gonna be coming to quite often, just go ahead and click and add it as your favorite. That way, whenever you come to dashboards, it will be the first option for you to select. All right, so that is it for this video. Hope this is helpful um, in getting you started and you can always you know, revise this to match what you need for your teams. Thank you for watching all to the end. I appreciate your uh, support and stay blessed and see you in my next video. Bye.